Welcome to the Voncast, um, live in the Bleacher Report app. We've got a lot to talk about today, man. Um, first, I want to address the fans that have, have been asking how it feels to be back on the field, and I will say it feels great. It feels great to be back in uh, general population because I was uh, in solitary confinement for so, so long, man, and, um, you know, I... You know, it wasn't it wasn't bad, but would I like to be playing football? Yes, I would love to be playing football instead of rehabbing my knee. Um, London, I, I felt like it was just, uh, you know, me just getting in the water. And I think uh, I started to swim a little bit this week, this last past week versus the Giants. And as long as I keep taking steps like that, I am fully confident that I will be able to um, become the player that I was again. Um, it's, just, it's just about taking little steps at a time, man. Um, ACL surgery is 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 no joke, but it is kind of easy though. I mean, it's 2023. Like I wouldn't wish this on anybody, but if you happen to have, you know, ACL surgery, it's 2023. It's not really that bad. You just gotta sit down a little bit. Um, but I'm I'm still, you know, trying to work and develop and get back to the player I was. But it feels great. You know, we're we're playing the Patriots this week, and um, I am excited to take another step this week versus the Patriots. But it's time for a very special guest on the Vaughn cast. Um, three-time Super Bowl champion, Super Bowl MVP. He holds the record for Super Bowl punt returns. One of the most clutch wide receivers in the history of our league, Julian Edelman. <laughs> Thanks for joining, my boy. Thanks for joining, my boy. All day, all day. Do I still have the pass to call you Vonnie? Because I remember the first time we met, I called you Vonnie by joking around. You said, hey, man, only the ladies call me Vonnie. <laughs> that's my. That's actually my real name, V-O-N-N-I-E. That, that is my real name. Um, and, of course, man, you, you, could, you could call me Vonnie, man. I, only my friends from back home and people that have been knowing me a long time, I've been knowing you for a while, man, you could call me Vonnie. And, of course, you know, the ladies do call me. Do call me Vonnie, man. But I appreciate you for coming on, man. You're a podcaster now. I'm a podcaster. Um, tell us about you know life outside of the league, man. What have, what have you been up to? It's been crazy, man. Like when you retire, everyone thinks you retire, but it's more of a transition. You know, we've we've built such a a cool life for ourselves that it gives us an opportunity to explore other things. I'm working on, you know, Fox in the morning on Sundays. I'm doing my own podcast game with names, and then I'm being a pops. You know, there there's. It's it's the first time you can say yes to things when you when you're done you're out of the league and, and you know you used to have the excuse oh well I got you know I got OTAs I got mini camps I got training camp I can't do it I got to sleep I, you know what I mean it's the first time you can you could do things so you know retirement's cool transitions cool you know, I'm I'm really enjoying to get to see my daughter every day and watching her grow and being you know more in, involved in her life so it's been fun man. That's cool, man. That's cool, man. When you retire, you know, you, you got a lot of time to play golf. You know, I heard you like to play golf. I love to play golf. I've been playing golf for, you know, two and a half years now. Um, I heard you love to play golf maybe a little bit too much. Nah. You know, we got a clip of you uh, with Brady's driver. <laughs> no. <laughs> whenever I'm with him. him that, first, that, bro. That means. Looks like she might need his driver. <laughs> <laughs> driver the good news is we won the super bowl <laughs> <laughs> that that was actually in uh that was in montana every year used we used to go to montana for the fourth of july or or you know right before camp to get some training in and whenever you're with brady it's training and then you golf and then you eat like an avocado ice cream or something something along that whole tb12 <laughs> method so you know, when I'm around him a bunch, I golf. I don't, you know, right now it's crazy. You know, I need to get on the course a lot more because, you know, a lot of deals are done on the course, but it's tough, man. I'm like a soccer dad and stuff. I'm taking my daughter soccer practice. Yeah. I'm watching. We got a soccer coach. You know, and after that, you know, you're recording podcasts. So, and then on Sundays, weekends during football season, I'm still working. So it, it's, it's, it's football season. When it's the off season for me, uh, you know, I'll probably get on on the course more. 
man I, I i love to play golf man i, I this is a uh, a podcast about a current football player talking about you know current moments in the league and talking to other football for, uh, football players former and current um but i like to talk about golf yeah i i damn near talk about golf every single show i just love everything about it man like you said it's a lot of deals done on the um on the golf course and for me it's just having that challenge again having that to be able to go out there and compete and get better and you know to to go into it and not be good at it and and develop and take a step here get a new driver a new putter check out new balls like uh, a new bag like visiting other golf courses it just gives me nothing gives me that that kind of uh you know how you get those nerves like before a game like yeah. nothing does that for me but golf, it does get like the competitive like juices flowing for me. You, I mean, it's an outlet for competitors to compete with themselves, no matter what you're doing. You don't have to be playing with other people. You could, you could be chipping balls in your backyard. You could be playing putt putt game, uh, you know, in, in, at your house or whatever. You go to miniature golf. You're always competing with yourself, and that's the cool thing about golf. You know, it's not so taxing on the. The body, even though when you see you're you're out of the league, all those little things that you had, you could feel it in your golf swing. <laughs> you know, the more you don't take care of your body like you do as a professional athlete. You know, when you're an athlete and you're in the game and you're pro, you're getting body mm -hmm. rubbed down twice a day. You know, you're sleeping. You're doing. You know, now you take all that out and you do it maybe twice a week. You start to feel that ACL you had eight years ago, that broken foot you had ten yeah. years ago. You know, it's crazy, but it, it's it's a fun sport and it's a it's an awesome way to compete with yourself. For sure, man. You know, I'm I'm a huge Tom Brady fan. Like, I almost got a Tom Brady tattoo. It was uh, it was gonna be like the twelve and like the Patriots number type of uh, like that type of numer numerical font, and I was gonna get like a uh, eighteen and like the Broncos like number font, and. At the last minute, I was like, "No, nah, I might as well just cha just just save this spot for a future day, man." But I love Tom Brady, and I know you love Tom Brady too. What was it like, you know, playing for the goat? I'll tell you right now. First off and foremost, I I I could probably promise you that Tom doesn't doesn't love you, because we used to have to change snap counts <laughs> because of you. I remember we were playing you in 2013 in the AFC Championship. We're sitting there like, "Oh, we want it to be a snowy day." Peyton can't grip the ball, this, that. It's 75 and sunny, and Vaughn Miller was in our backfield before he even said goddamn hut. I remember watching it. I was literally, I was in the slot, and I go, and I'm looking at the ball, and you were already in the backfield before I got off my first step. I'm like, oh, my God, it's going to be a long day. <laughs> so, um, but with Tom, man, it, it, was, it was awesome to get to play and be part of his story. I mean, it's it's a it's an honor. He, he's the greatest to suit him up, man. He, he's he's an ultimate competitor, but he's even a better person. He's an unbelievable family guy. You know, I've learned so much on how to be a professional with him. You know, taking taking your craft and and really living in that craft, but also being able to compartmentalize. You know, and and separate your craft from when you have to. You know, you have your family time and being able to live other other lives you know putting all those different hats on he's like the best at it like when it's football time he was all football and then when you know he's a family guy he's family i learned a lot of that from him uh and he's just an awesome dude he's a nice guy he's like awkwardly nice like where you're sitting there like dude you can't be that nice you can't be that nice tom you really can't he knows everyone's name he just he's the guy that you like you want to hate but you're you meet him in real life, because if like other you fans can't. are like, we hate this guy, and then anyone who meets him in real life, they're like, I can't hate him. He's that guy. Yep. Yeah, one hundred percent, man. Like I, I said it, I said it uh, so many times, man. I'm like the only reason not to like Tom Brady is because he wins. Like, and that's not a good reason to not like somebody. Like I've, I've I think really for me, what really made me really like, what, what made me. Um, what made me really like Tom Brady is when we were at the Kentucky Derby, and um, I, I, well, I think you were there too. I think I yeah. think you were at the Kentucky Derby. You know, I ran into Tom, and I was I was talking to Tom. It was kind of I think we were at like this this club or something wherever we at, man. And he was just so cool, man. Like, 
he was smiley. He was happy. He was like, man, Vaughn, come over here, man. It was so cool, man. And I was like, damn, like, Tom Brady is super cool, man. Then the next day, um, you know, I think uh, for for CBS, they, they haven't had a Tom Brady interview in years. And I was doing, like, lifestyle. I was doing, like, uh, color commentating, like, on the Kentucky Derby and the whole spectacle of the thing. And I was like, hey, man, can you, can you ask Tom for an interview? Like, he never does it. And I was like, man, I asked Tom Brady. I went over to ask Tom Brady. He said yes immediately. And we had did the interview, and it was the first time he had done it, like one on national television for like in like ten in like ten years, and everybody went crazy, man. And that's why I really like started to like Tom Brady. I'm like, bro, he like super cool to achieve all the things that he has, and you know to be Tom Brady, and you know have all these things surrounding you, man. Like he is really a down to earth guy. He's a he's a normal guy, man. He just loves his craft. He loves to win. I mean, he loves he love he loves hanging out with his guys, man. And I just felt that energy like coming off of him, man. And, and immediately there in that moment, man, I fell in love with Tom Brady, man. But defending him on the football field was another um, was just a whole another thing, man. You and you and Tom Brady, whenever we played um, the Patriots, I always felt like he just. If it was like a weakness in our in our defense, he saw it immediately. I felt like he saw it like immediately. If we was blitzing, he knew like, okay, I'm going to hit the pocket right behind the blitz. If we weren't blitzing, if we were playing zone or whether it, it felt like he knew exactly where to go with the ball. Um, he did hold the ball for me a couple of times. Like, I, I, I appreciate it. I appreciate Tom for doing it. I, I think I think he's the third most quarterback that – that I've that I've uh, that I've sacked in my career, he did hold the ball a little bit, and I appreciate him for that. We played but, a lot. We played you know, a lot. Bob. We that. played a lot. That's what, you know. We played a lot. <laughs> we played a lot, bro. I played Tom Brady. I played Tom Brady for for eleven years for sure, man. But it was super tough playing you guys. It was super tough, you know, playing the Patriots in the golden years, man. Um, you guys were were both known for mental toughness. Um, how did you guys like sharpen each other? Uh, I think it was. You know, just through the the reps that we had together, uh, and, and practice. You know, with, with Tom, like every practice had a purpose. It wasn't like we were just out yeah. there just to lube up the arm, lube up the legs, and 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 you know throw the ball around. Like he he always had something that he wanted to work on, and he was very meticulous and a perfectionist. When it came to it, like he practiced his nuts off. And as a guy, you know, that that was trying to, you know, get into that culture, you know, when you're a young guy and you see the number one guy doing it, you know, you, you fall in line. And, and I think that's where we connected a lot because I was a competitive guy that liked to practice. We practiced a lot together, you know, with the team, you know, in the off season and different destinations. We'd go and practice and and that's where we fell uh that's where i fell in love with him bond you know that's 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 where he got me you know no but uh that's, that's dope I, man he got me at the he got me at the kentucky derby man he got you in practice man he gets everybody he's got an aura when you meet him isn't he he got that aura he got that chin and stuff and he's got those those blue eyes and he's dressed up like he's probably sitting some swaggy tom ford something like the dude is cool hey tom man hey Hey Tom, man, if you're watching this, man, we love you, man. Hello, yeah, man. Yeah, <laughs> hey Tom, if you're watching right. this, you know I, I appreciate you doing an interview for Vonnie, and you know I played with you, won three Super Bowls <laughs> with you, and you still haven't come on my podcast. So thank you, Tom. I love you. <laughs> hey, it's all love, man. I'm sure you do it, man. But let's let's get into it, man. It was a huge week of upsets in the NFL. You know the Jets took down Philly for the first time in franchise history. You know the Browns wrecked the 49ers. Perfect record. It really came down to that last kick you know but it, it felt like it felt like the browns were in control of their game for the most part the whole game what game surprised you the most um i mean those were two surprising losses you know for philly and, and san francisco but a lot of it had to do with you know you're in this third the, the third part of the season you know third of the season's done and the the excitement of the season being there early on, you know, like when the season first starts, everyone gets excited. Yeah. And then there's the grind. The grind starts about week six to about week 10. That's when it's hard. You don't feel great getting out of bed. You know, injuries start to, to play a place in the season. And I think that's exactly what happened with Philadelphia and San Francisco. I mean, Christian McCaffrey for San Francisco, he's knocked out. They They call plays completely different. 
You know, then Debo Samuel goes out. He gets a shoulder. Then Trent Brown's out. The, you know, so the fact that they had an opportunity to still win that game is still pretty impressive. Hopefully yeah. those guys can get back because they're going to need them to keep that well-oiled machine going. But, you know, losing at this time of the year is not always bad. You know that. And then with Philly, I think it's a combination of both. You know, Lane Kennett, or uh, Lane got hurt. They let their tackle. He's been yep. there. And you got to see the – what's his – they're like – they can't win without him. His his record with and without him is like astonishing crazy. Uh, and then mm-hmm. also, I think with the new coordinator, you got Johnson over there with Hertz. You know, they're still trying to feel each other out. They, they're a team that really doesn't have an identity from what I'm looking at on offense yet. You know, they got the tush push mm-hmm. and they got every, you know, they got the weapons, but they don't have that identity. And because their offense and defense lines are so dominative, you can you can get away winning ball games without an identity, but you know it fell in. Yeah. You know if they played against a hungry team with a good defense, the New York Football Jets, and, and, it, and, it, and, it, and it and it ended up hurting them and, and, and punching them in the stomach. So you know, hopefully they learn from that and hopefully they can keep it get it going because this is the time of year where you are what you are. We need to start building on our strengths. You know you got four six weeks down. That's kind of like, all right, now we got a sample size of what we do well and what we don't do well. Let's let's sharpen these things so we can get on that run because we all know the best the best football is going to be played at the back end of the season. And if you're not playing your best football, 100%. that's when you're watching the games at home during January. So, you know, those were two surprising losses, but they're not really surprising. You know, the league's got so much parity. You know, everyone's good in the NFL. I hate when people say, you know, oh, you lost to this. Yo, they're getting paid too. They got ballers too. They may not have yeah. a superstar, or the superstar hasn't evolved yet, or become something. But everyone's getting paid. You got coaches working their dicks off. All can you swear on this? Yeah, uh, yeah you good. You know they're, they're <laughs> working their balls off all night. Even if you're on losing teams or winning teams, all coaches are pretty much. You know, coaches work. That's what they do. So everyone's trying to win. Oh man, you know. So it doesn't really ever surprise me, but it does tell us things that we need to know about these teams that did loss specifically Philadelphia and San Francisco can Philadelphia get an identity can San Francisco get healthy and find ways to win when they may not have Christian McCaffrey at their disposal sometimes using those other weapons and uh also that that San Francisco game was a little tricky because it was a weather game you know Brock I saw a couple balls slip out of his hand so that's that's good for a young quarterback to feel that you know he he he, Mm -hmm. I don't think he's probably played in a, a weather game yet you know, when you get to have that experience, now he's going to learn from that. He's going to, you know, he's going to learn that, hey, maybe on a wet week, let's let's throw these balls slick during practice so I can get my grips. And, yeah. you know, there was a couple times, there was a quick snap. He was trying to get a screen out. He didn't get the laces. And, you know, there, there's, there's he's got to learn that. He, he probably hadn't done it in a while. So these are, these are good losses for these teams if they use them right. Both of those teams, the Browns and the Jets had strong performances. Um, Great D-lines. Coach, uh, uh, Robert, what is it? Sala, Sally, Sala, 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 Coach Sala, Sala, <clears throat> Coach Sala. He he said they have they have embarrassed all the quarterbacks that he played, and I had to sit back and think about it. And he has like that defense has embarrassed every single quarterback that they've played. Patrick Mahomes had two two picks against them. Hertz had three picks, and they didn't even have they didn't even have Sauce yet out there. So that, that's impressive. And then who else? Yeah. Who else they play? Josh threw three. Josh, Josh threw, threw three. three picks in the first. I mean, th- th- yeah. That all starts from having that big old guy in the middle of that that D line too, because you know what quarterbacks <laughs> don't like? They don't like that pressure in the middle of the pocket. They hate that. No, they don't. They hate that. When guys like you are super fast and you got a good couple, you got a you got that middle of the pocket. They can step right up. You know what I mean? If you can't step up, you're done. Who do you think the best team in the NFL is right now? I'm going to go uh, my best football team. I think the best team – I don't know if they're the best football team, but who's playing the best to me is the Detroit Lions. Uh, you know, Goff yeah. has had a resurgence of, of his career. They've gone on the road and won big games. They knocked off the last year champs Chiefs opening night on banner dropping. Now that's a big win, and they had, you know, let up the next week, and, the, and then now they're – four straight so you know Jared Goff he's playing strong football they could run the football their offensive line 
It looks like they can control games. They're getting great production from their offensive line, which allows the play action to open up and Jared Goff to flourish. They got a run game. Their defensive line, Hutchinson, the kid's making big plays. They spent that second overall draft pick last year on them, and, and it's finally feeling like you know it's coming to fruition over there. They're playing, you know, they're playing pretty good football and they're winning on the road. So I don't know if they're the best team in the league, but they're playing the best to me right now. And they're playing really good football, man. When we played the Lions last year, that was a game where I tore my ACL. But before that game, like, I felt like, man, these guys are good, man. Like, from both tackles on each end on each end of the field, um, Jared Goff, was, he was playing good football back then in their defense. They're led by this defense, man, and this defense is, is is playing really good football. And they're coached by Dan Campbell. He's a he's a fighting Texas Aggie, man. And you know, I, you know, I love I love uh, I love Coach Campbell, man. And you know, whenever he got the head coaching job, I was like, man, I don't know if he can do it. I knew right away that Dan Campbell was going to have success. He has he has Aaron Glenn over there. I think Aaron Glenn is a defensive coordinator. He's been and, doing really well. So it's a team full of Aggies over there. Glenn's been ki- dude. That defense playing. That the defense is playing very well. Like. A lot better than they were playing last year, and that's what you want to see. From you, you want to see progression. You know they didn't yep. get that many new guys on. I mean, did they? I think they may have got a corner and a safety. No, I don't think they did. They got a safety from Philly, I think. Um, but yeah, I mean, yeah, they got they got yeah, they got uh, what well, they got uh, Gardner uh, Gardner Johnson. Yeah, he's over there now. Yeah, yeah, they're playing tough, man, and and they're they're taking on the mantra of their head coach. What does Dan Campbell like? Just mm-hmm. spit. When you think of a mental toughness, you know they're they're, they're a mentally yep. tough team. You know when, when what was it Jared Goff three weeks ago against who was it the Packers division game? They're used to losing these games. The Packers come out and score opening drive. Jared Goff goes out, throws a pick, and then they get the ball back. And what's Jared Goff do? And you've seen so much growth in his career. He, he leads the team down to score right after the interception where a lot of, you know, back in the day, you would, you, his sh- confidence used to get shook. I played him in a Super Bowl when, you know, Bill was giving him all these crazy looks. You could just tell he was a little flustered. Mm-hmm. So his growth and, and his mental toughness is it's being, it's just being portrayed out there on in, in Detroit. And I, I hope they have success this year and continue this success and they stay healthy because I think it's a cool story, man. Detroit hadn't been good in a minute. You know, probably if they they ever won a Super Bowl, but like they haven't been competitive, competitive in in a long time, and it's an exciting team that has a fan base that loves their sports, that hasn't had as much success as you know they they want. Man, they they they're doing a great job, man, and it's all lamp it's all led by Dan Campbell, man. I love Dan Campbell. Let me uh, transition over to the Bills Patriots game this weekend. It's going to be a good game. I feel like I, like I said before. Um, there are no slouch teams in the in the NFL. Um, it, like Edelman said early in the podcast, like you know everybody um, in the league they get paid. You know everybody's grown men, um, and it could it could you always see teams that get beat that shouldn't have been beat, and you always see teams that that win that that shouldn't probably win. So each and every week is its own game. And when I watch the the Patriots on film, I see the golden years. I see the golden years of the Patriots. I see golden years, like the golden years when they had you, Tom Brady, Gronkowski. That Bills still calling the same plays. It's still the same defense, but I feel like they're they lose the ball early in games, and the game just gets out of hand early in the game. I was watching the film today, and they had this little play action pass to the running back, and usually Gronkowski would be open right over the middle, but you know he. For some reason, Mac Jones just came off of that look. They're definitely not starting fast, which is a problem because they're built to probably play from ahead um, with, with what they got over there on offense. But, you know, I, it's been a rough year for everyone. I think it's a collective whole unit thing on the offensive side of the ball. Now, you know, I've been tough on Mac early this year, but, like, he's not – you know, it, one play when Mac makes a good throw – the receiver falls down one play when the receiver's open, the offensive line's not protecting. Like they're just not compounding good play after good play, let alone just like doing a regular play. You know what I mean? So, and then they get into these big holes and then you throw in turnovers 
you know, and then you throw over the special teams that hasn't been performing like they have uh, years past. And, and, and then you get this, you know, so it, it's been a tough year. It's, it's, it's hard to watch. I'm sad for everyone over there because I know the, the work that they put in, you know, the Matthew Slater, I still, he's still on the team. He's been playing forever, 15, 16 years. You know, this got to be tough for him. You know, it's a different team. There's only yeah. a couple of them from those golden years that you you, you said earlier. Um, so I I feel bad. I hope that they can stack a couple good plays together. Let's just let's just worry about that before we're thinking about winning. Let's just like worry about like let's stack. Let's not have a negative play. Let's just not have a negative play for a drive. Yeah. You know, let's not have a, a bonehead penalty that starts us off in, you know, first and 15 or, you know, a holding penalty. And then you're in second and 20 or first and 20. And those are drive killers. We all know that. Then you got guys like Von Miller with their ears pinned, ready to just take your head off. Like that's <laughs> you can't play like that, especially how it's being coached over there. So I think it's a combination of everything, man. It, it, it's just been a bad year over there. And I, I feel bad because, you know, they're working hard. You know, you know, you know, the stress is high because of the standard that's been set there for the last 20 years. You know, there's a standard, you know, so you, you just hope and, and, and you hope that, you know, being an outsider looking, looking into it. I'm not I'm not in there anymore. You just hope that the leadership, you know, on that on that on, on that team can can get these guys to yeah. just worry about the little things, you know, because that's really. The game that's that's what the NFL is. It take it's not the team that, you know, makes the most plays. It's the team that makes the least amount of mistakes that wins. Games are lost in the National Football League. They're not won. Like it that's really what it is because mm -hmm. everyone's going to make a play. It's it's about the play you don't make like in a bad play that that's what makes a team win. I don't know if you know you know what I'm talking about, Vaughn? Yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. Do so. Where does the team go from here? Do you do you trade Mac Jones for Kirk Cousins? If if Kirk Cousins, yeah. if he removes his no trade clause, do you trade for Kirk Cousins or do you ride it out with Mac Jones? I would stick it out. You know, stick yeah, it out. they're not going to pay Kurt next year. You know, they're not renting. You, you'd rent nope. Kirk Cousins if you had a shot. You know, because unless you want to pay him for the next few years, I think you gotta, you gotta, you gotta stick with Mac and me. This is where you see his mental toughness. And, and, you know, when things are not at its best, a lot of, you know, characteristics yeah. come out of people and, and that's kind of when you want to evaluate them. Cause that's when you know you got a dog or not. I like Mac Jones. I like Mac Jones. Like I see, you can see, you can see the talent, like you can see like why he was a first rounder. You can see like why people are so excited about Mac. It's just like you said before, on this play, the receiver falls down. On this play, uh, the defensive end comes free and he gets sacked and now we're behind the sticks. Like it's just one thing after another, but you can see the talent there with, with Mac Jones. I see it on film, like I've seen it on TV. It's just, you know, it's just this play or that play, and it just it just sets him back on the sticks. It, um, it's tough, though. You know, like for me, when people ask me all the time, it's hard for me because I've only seen really one one way. And, and you know, the guy that I played with, Tom, like if the offensive line was struggling that day, he would adjust his game. He would get the ball out quick. Let's, like, find a quick matchup yeah. and, like, you know what I mean? Like, or if. The receiver, you know, the, he knew how to adjust his game, and, and it's hard to to give a, a true unbiased take on the whole thing because that's really all I know. You know, I, I was yeah. there with Cam, but that was different. You know, that was a different year. It was weird. It was fucking COVID year. Ain't nobody – that COVID year was weak. You know how it goes. <laughs> I was hurt. I was hurt. I was hurt the whole year. I was hurt the whole year, man. I don't, I don't, that's I don't why know, I retired. I, don't know. I retired because of COVID. <laughs> I couldn't eat, you couldn't even meet with people. You couldn't eat. You, you were eating out a little like like take it take home salads and stuff. Like what the fuck is everything was in the river? They started changing up everything. I was I was like I got it was crazy, man. You had to test before you came you had to test before you came in the facility, all Every that, man. Day. And Tyreek has been balling down in Miami. Um he's currently on place 
to break Megatron's single season receiving record. Um, I think it's I think it's super impressive, man. Like I think Megatron's I think his uh his record's been been there for at least I wanna I wanna go ahead and say at least a decade. He said he was gonna go for two thousand at the beginning of the year. He has almost a thousand yards through six games. You know, he has eleven games left. Like it's crazy what he's doing up there, man. He's one of the best wide receivers, if not the best wide receiver in the league. Like he's 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 going crazy, man. And he's not doing it with the size. He's doing it with the speed and you know, he's still getting double and triple covered and he's still able to get open. He's still able to burn guys. Um he's just he's just a he's just a, a great receiver, man. And you know, I just think that you know, he's just one he's just he's just one of them ones. He's got crazy speed, but he can also get in and out of his breaks. So he can route you up if you try to if you try to press him. And if you back up yeah. and and he gets on your toes, you ain't gonna catch him. So like the combination of crate and he's like really strong. He's not a big guy, mm -hmm. but he's explosive. Like he's got a strong bottom end. Like he can shed guys off and run through guys and he can get through releases strong and he can out quick you. He can out speed you. He can out strength you. He's only about five eight. What is he, five nine? Like and he yeah, can jump. In there. He could jump through it. Like he could probably you probably got like a fifty inch vert. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> it looks like it for sure. So when you co you combine like all that, he he's got a good thing going from right now, man. He, and I, I I think he's he could do it. He's gonna do it if he stays healthy. Yeah, I think he'll he's do, it. do it too. Because a six yard hit trout to him could be that could be sixty yards. All he, all he needs is one person to miss, and honestly, that guy that's guarding him, he might be ten yards off of him, and that's the that's how, that's the only that's all the space that he needs to take exactly. it the distance. I, I remember our first. I remember my first time playing Tyreek Hill, um, and the key to leave, you know, he was on a, he was on a Denver Broncos defense at the time, and I remember after that game, the, the Chiefs they just killed us. I think this was the beginning of like the little jet sweep where he where Patrick Mahomes like tossed the ball in front of him and Tyreek catches it, and you know the ends couldn't they they he just flew by the ends before they even knew what was happening. And I remember the next day, like a key to leave talking about Tyreek Hill, he was like, bro, he, this ain't no normal just. This ain't no normal, just fast receiver. Like he, he a football player. Like he can play. He said he can play football. He's strong. He can yeah. fast. He fast. He stiff arm. Like he was like, bro. And, and hearing that from Akeem Talib because two years before that, like we're in the Super Bowl and Akeem saying, man, these receivers, man, I, I, I these these receivers ain't gonna do nothing. So if, to see him give like Tyreek Hill those type of props, man, I knew Tyreek Hill was gonna be great, man. And that was early on. Um, How another full receiver is that's been known for. I love Akeem. Oh, man, I, I, man, I used to call him Akeem. Two Chains or Unchain because he always wore like ch Two Chains. This is before Two Chains. Like everyone had Two Chains. I'm like, hey, Tilly, you got to take that chain off. You only got Unchain, bro. He's like, hey, Juice. You know, you got his high ass pitch boy. Hey, Juice, what you talking about? Oh, man. He came, when he came to the Denver Broncos, man, he. He wore like watches and, and chains and like by the end of that by the end of that 2015 season, everybody was iced up. Like he said, "Hey man, like sitting next to me, you go. Hey, you better get you some ice because you hey, you gonna look milky sitting next to me." Yeah. <laughs> so by the end of that season, man, I'm talking about everybody from Derek Wolf to to uh, Emmanuel Sanders. Everybody had everybody was iced up, man. I speaking, I like that. I like that. I like that impression of of, of a key, man, and. You know, I hear you're a master of impressions. No, I'm not. You, I, actually, for it, I, I honestly do terrible <laughs> impressions. I just, I just commit to them. I just. But if you up them. for it, I would, uh, I would, I want to, I would want to, you know, play a little game with you, man. Is, is that cool, man? I Let's, can give you somebody. You can give me. The, I'll uh, try. The impression. I'm not. I'm telling you, I, I ain't no Frank Caliendo out here, dude. I'm not. Like I'm terrible at it. But let's see. All right. Okay, what would Gronk say about Travis Kelsey and Taylor Swift? Yo, Jules, can you believe that Kelsey and Swift are together? Like, I, I just, that's pretty cool. Like, something like that. That's that's kind of <laughs> what, I can't believe it, right, well, Okay, what, <laughs> what, would Bill, what would Bill Belichick say if you sent him a birthday present? If I sent him a birthday present. Yeah. 
he probably wouldn't say anything but he would he would probably write you a crazy <laughs> he'd write he, he writes you handwritten letters and he'd be very oh, thoughtful cool. on it but he'd be like look jules like i hope you don't think that i'm gonna get you a present now like, what the fuck <laughs> What would what would Tom Brady say if you invite him on a vacation? If I invited him on a vacation, yeah. Look, babe, you know, like, babe, I, <laughs> I got my kids in in Miami, in New York, babe. I, I I'm probably not gonna be able to make it, babe. Sorry, babe. I love you, babe. <laughs> Next time we go to Bakers, I'll I'll bring you. I'll, I'll helicopter you there. So, thanks for the invitation, but I'll, I'll let you know. Hey, that, yeah, you got his voice down perfect. What, what, would, what would Randy Moss say if someone just got Moss? Shit, Edelnut. You know that song? A Star is Born Today? Yep. They made that. That, that song was made when I was born, and now they saying this about me. 98 first round, get to know me. They used to tell me that all the time. Edelnut, 98 first round, get to know me. Randy, you're the greatest receiver <laughs> I've ever seen. I know who you are. 98 first round. Okay. Okay, what will what Von Miller say after second Tom Brady? What would, what would Von Miller say? Yeah, what would I say? Yo, Brady, you can call me Vonnie. I only let the ladies call it to me usually, but I love you, man. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, that, hey, that was perfect, bro. Like you said, bro, you a master, bro. You a master of absolutely um, impressions, not, bro. man. I'm terrible at fucking impressions. <laughs> man, I love the Bill Belichick one and the Randy Moss one, man. Like you are great, man. Before I let you go, man, I got I got one more game for you. Just one more. You ranked third all time in the playoff and playoff receptions behind Jerry Rice and Travis Kelsey and catches. You wanted the the best. You, and catches. You want to? You're one of the. Look at Kelsey, the dude. He's a monster. <laughs> he go to the playoffs every. He go to the playoffs every year, man. You are one of the best playoff performers ever in the history of our league. So I wanted to build your all-time clutch playoff team. Assuming you're you're already on the roster, so you're already on this roster. I'm gonna give you twelve bucks, and you have to build your your all-time playoff clutch team. And obviously Tom Brady is at five dollars. And we got Gronk at five dollars too. So you could I mean, you could you could use both of those guys. I know you love those guys, but then we had to settle for Heinz Ward and Marshawn Lynch. But if you could use this twelve dollars, how would you build your all time playoff clutch? I think five dollars is already going to Tom Brady, right? Yeah, without a doubt. I mean it's a quarterback league. I gotta pay <laughs> you get the quarterback right, you you're gonna be all right. So we're going TB. Um, now who would T? See, Jerry. He, Jerry's too expensive. Because you got to go. Man. I, I I already know you. You got to go. Gronk. I'll give Gronk. And how is so Marshawn? To... How is Marshawn a dollar? I'm taking Marshawn. Yeah, I, I didn't set this up. I, I didn't set Actually, this up, but it, uh, and then we got to go with Heinz Ward. You got to go with Heinz Ward. And you already on you already on the roster too. You already on the roster too, so it's good. Actually, then I got I got to go back. I got to. Yeah, I'm on this roster, so I got to go back. Ah, you already on, you already on the team. This this not including you. So do I got to go Kelsey and then To? I might have to go, but you know Kelsey, see Gronk's up that seam. He can like. You know, like Kelsey might take some of my rocks. You know, and he already got so you many can't rocks. Feed everybody, man. Nah, put back that on Gronk. <laughs> you gotta go with Gronk and me and Hines. We'll, we'll, this is Tom. When I don't know if Tom would necessarily pick this. But this is. <sighs> I think I think we can win. I think we can win with this. I think Hines wore my everybody on there. I'm already won a Super Bowl already, man. So I, I think we can. I mean, how can Marshawn only we, be a buck? You know, sometimes just, you know, sometimes it, bright, like prices I'm, drop, man. This is this is a this is like clearly like this would be a physical a physical way of winning. <laughs> you know, Heinz Ward going and block the force, Marshawn. You know, we give him the ball, hit that play action to Gronk right up the seam. Man, that's that's super dope, man. Like like I I, I can ride with this too, man. I, obviously, I could go with 
if I wasn't going to pick Manning Brady, Brady man. if I wouldn't pick Brady, I'd pick Joe. Joe, Mo Joe Montana. I love Joe. Sure. I grew up a Niners fan. Big Joe Montana fan. Oh, that's dope. So I go Joe. I, I, I would go Joe, T.O., Marshawn, Gronk. If I if I couldn't pick Tom. If I couldn't pick you Tom. Said, you said it's Joe, T.O., Marshawn, Marshawn, Gronk. We can we can win with. If I couldn't pick two, Gronk, then I would go Travis, T.O., Marshawn, Travis. T.O., Marshawn, Tom. But this is my team if I, if I could pick those two. <laughs> hey, that's dope, man. I got I got, I got got one or two chat questions, man. They've been going crazy in the chat for you, man. Um, they said, Julian, besides your Super Bowl catch in the fourth versus Atlanta, what's your best catch of all time? What's the, your favorite catch of all time? The third and 14 against Seattle, we were down 10 points. It was in the fourth quarter. Cam Chancellor lit me up, laid across the middle. That that was my favorite catch. It's kind of like a microcosm of my career, you know, just a tough catch, take a big hit, get up, and finish the drive. I like that one. Did you see? Did you see the the Dable and and did you see Dable and Tyrod getting getting into it after the first half in the Giants game? What's the maddest Belichick ever was at you? Uh, you know, Bill, yeah, that was some bad situational football right there. Yeah, that was crazy. Yeah. He, I'm not complaining, but I'm not complaining. But. Yeah, that was, yeah, that was bad. Uh, you know, Coach Belichick was, he wouldn't get on you in front of people. Like, he would never, during the game, there's problems to be solved, and, like, nothing would get, across from getting on a guy like me now I, i'm you know maybe a quarterback i'm a receiver i'm i'm a i'm not the guy leading a, a a side of the ball so he never really got mad at me i mean he'd give you a look i remember i fumbled the ball against the giants on a punt return like my my third year and i i he just you know he kind of gave me a look but that's all he had to give me and i knew he was all right he didn't i knew he was mad K7 Whoop, he said, I don't get why Julian still doesn't have a gold jacket, one of the best slot receivers to ever play the game. And I completely agree with that 100%, man. Um, I witnessed it. Um, I even seen you. You remember that time you was on the field and you were wearing those linemen? Clothes? Yeah. <laughs> and, <laughs> you, <laughs> I tell that story all the time. I broke my foot. So I came back with the broken foot. I had these metal plates in my foot. I couldn't, I couldn't even run that game, remember? And, and, and Vaughn, right when, like, you kind of knew the game was, they almost had it sealed. He looks at me, or it was early in the game. I think you he, he said, hey, Jules, man. It was early. I respect your game, man, but I can't, I can't. You got to swag up more on your cleats. You can't be wearing those Cadillacs <laughs> or something. You said something like that. Those things look like. And he was like, man, my, he was like, man, my foot. Man, I broke my foot, man. <laughs> I was like, bro, what are you doing? What are you? Like, what are you doing, man? I but I knew, I knew your foot was hurt, man. I knew your foot was hurt. I was just fucking with you, man. And like I said before, man, like I've I've witnessed it on the oh. football field, man. You are a hell of a player, man. Um, hell of a person, man. I, I've get gotten to know you on and off the football field, man. It would have been dope to be your teammate, man. And that's another thing too. Before I let you go, man, I remember Tom Brady telling me. Um, at the at the Kentucky Derby, man, he was like, "Hey, man, come on down to come on down to, to New England." I was like, "Whoa, hey, he does he know something that I don't know, man? Like he he might know something that I don't know. I would love to play with with Tom Brady, man. What it would I would have loved to be your teammate, man. I, I would I think I think we would got along great, man. And now hopefully I see you on the links, man. If you ever want me to come on your podcast, man, you know I got you, man. It's all love and respect, man, and it's an honor and a privilege to have you on my show. Get bro. out of here, man. I, you're you're, I mean, I, you still got the chicken company. I remember you telling me about that like eight years ago at a, we were at the P Diddy party. Remember that? <laughs> we're at uh, yep. Old Shores in Miami or something. Uh, dude, you're, you're a, you're a goat, bro. I mean, I, I've witnessed you, uh, put me to put our teams out of the, our miseries. Uh, I loved competing against you. You were always a cool dude. Every time that we've linked up in the off season, at some function 
and like the things that you're doing while you're playing, man, that's an inspiration for a lot of these young guys. I mean, you're one of the first guys to have a current guy playing with the podcast. Now every, it seems like everyone's doing it and, and you, you're a trendsetter, dude. So you keep on doing it and we'll link when you're out in LA, get you on games with names. Everyone who's listening right now, click and subscribe. Give us a comment in the section about what game you want us to do and remember rate and review <laughs> all love man i appreciate you g man thank you man all day i'll see you bro